Konnichiwa! In today's show, I'm going to be taking this battered old Mega Drive box and trying to restore it so it looks more like this Mega Drive box. Let's get into this. Game on! So today's show I'm going to be taking you through how to restore your old video game console boxes. Now I've done this with a couple of my boxes, things like 32X here, it looks pretty much brand new and essentially what I've done is a little bit of restoration on the box and then patching up work. You can see I've done the same here with the Sega Mega Drive box, there's a little bit of restoration on here and then a ton of patching up over the damaged parts of the cardboard. So today we're going to look at what restoration we can do, what we can do to bring the box closer back to its original state and then we're going to be looking at patching up work. Now the patching up work is what makes the box look like it's new but if you look closer, so I don't know if you can see this on the camera here, but if you look closer you can start to see where the damage on the box was and then we've just patched up over it. We're not going to be using any super specialist materials here, things that's going to cost you a ton of money. It's just general things that you have around the house or that you could go to any store and purchase. So to do this video, I went out onto eBay and picked up a Mega Drive Mark 1 where the box was a little bit damaged. So we're going to take a look at that now. Right, so this is, this is the box, this is the, uh, the Mega Drive I've purchased and it's it's way more damaged than I thought it was. So this is gonna be a real challenge. We can see we've got the scuffing on the edges, which is the stuff that I'm used to fixing. Um, but we've got some major damage down the side here. Something's really eaten into this box. We've had water damage, so the cardboard's pulled away. Let's take a closer look at this box and the damage on it. We'll get the Mega Drive out as well, make sure that works, clean that up if it needs to be, and then get into the process of restoring and patching up this old Mega Drive box. Although to be honest, I think I've got my work cut out for me. Hey you. NASA. Give me the Cyber Razor cut. Cyber Razor cut. Yeah! <laughs> so uh, here's our box. We can see this has got some significant scuffing around here. This worries me the most. The damage here, I mean, this has been eaten away by something we've lost. This is separated quite badly. Um, this stuff's not too bad, it's separated again. It looks like it's got some, it's had some water damage that's got on there. The back's okay. It's just, it's just a bit grubby and dirty. This is really good. That hasn't uh, fallen off. And the, it's in pretty good condition, especially for a Mega Drive box. The same with the inside flaps as well. Like none of these have torn off. That would be a pain to, to restore. Again, we've got this damage around here. I'm pretty sure we can touch a lot of this stuff up. We've got okay, that's torn, but we can definitely uh, we can definitely restore this quite easily. So all in all. I mean, the box is in quite good condition for restoration. Like I said, this bit is, this bit's probably the most worrying bit. I'm really gonna have to think about how I get, um, how I get around this. Right, quick look inside and then we'll get on with uh, fixing this box up. So the inside box is in brilliant condition. This is great. A little bit of restoration work that needs to go on inside here. That's a, a pretty decent Mega Drive we've got there. So the first thing we're gonna do with this box is actually clean it up. And what I'm gonna use here is, um, is baby wipes. Baby wipes are great because they're just non-acidic, non-corrosive. And you're gonna get some rubbish on here, on these boxes, especially the older ones, where so many people have handled it. Oh, look at that, you can see that really collapsing in there where the water damage is settled in. Thank you. 
Next up, we're going to actually iron the box. So this is a, a classic, classic repair trick for damaged boxes. And especially when you've got boxes that are a little bit warped uh, and with bent corners like that, it just straightens everything out. Um, but to do that, I'm gonna have to deconstruct the box a little because it's uh, glued still. So when you start ironing your box, a common mistake is that people put down a cloth and then iron over the top of it. Yes, it protects the box, but your cloth can sometimes get, have the fibers stick into the cardboard, especially when it's exposed and it's damaged as much as this is. You're best off using baking paper or greaseproof paper, and that will protect it uh, and you won't get fibers sticking into your cardboard. ironed our box. This is a lot stiffer now. It's not as bendy and concave as it was before. It's just made it a little bit easier to work with. So the next part of our process now is to start repairing where the boxes come away and split and we've got bits of damage like this. We're not going to use sellotape so you can see here, uh, this is a box I've had since I was a kid and I obviously used sellotape to hold it together here and along the edges here. Uh, and sellotape is horrible stuff for repairing your boxes. It discolors, it flakes off, and it can leave the box more damaged than it originally was. So we're not using sellotape, we're not touching anything like that. We're gonna be using PVC glue. This stuff is amazing for repairing boxes. You never have to use any kind of sellotape if you use this stuff. Even if you've got tears, you can run this stuff along the edge of the tear and then just hold it in place. The only problem with it is, is we're gonna to have to leave it for 24 hours to bond with the cardboard. But uh, let's get into repairing some of this damage here. Great use for the baby wipe here is just getting rid of any excess glue. Right, that's, uh, that's all set and gluing. We'll leave that for 24 hours and uh, we'll come back to it tomorrow. So everything's dried nicely now. You can see that's nicely pushed down, it's glued together. We still have this problem here where it's been eaten away, but I think I've got an idea for it. We're gonna take, we're gonna take some of this parchment paper here, some of this uh, baking paper, put that behind, cut some strips out, put it behind, and then I'm gonna get some bits of corrugated cardboard that we've got here. Just tear it out into little pieces, fill them into the holes here, and then just pour a load of this PVC glue on there and let it settle uh, and let it dry. And then I've got an idea for making sure that uh, this doesn't look as grotty as it does. So let's, uh, let's do that now. about how we're gonna cover the rest of the damage. So it looks like our patching up has worked. That is really solid. It's not going anywhere. So those holes are filled now, which is excellent. Next, we're gonna put the box back together again 
and then we're going to start uh, touching up the box which will make it look a lot better than it currently is hopefully you can see here this was teared down here now that is pretty solid and that's just from the glue it works so well it's so much better than sellotape I'm just going to put something heavy in the bottom here to help the glue bond to the cardboard. So for the next part of our restoration, actually pretty much the final part of the restoration, we're going to use these. These are water-based pens or felt tips and what they do is they help cover up all the scuffs and scratches on the box uh, and help it to appear as if the box is undamaged or at least in better condition than it was originally. Now, the key with using these is to use it on small areas like this. And the darker the color, the easier it is, and the more believable it is when you fix it up. It's harder matching lighter colors like this yellow here without it looking like a child's come along and colored it in. So you gotta be careful when you're using colors. Black's easy, that's why I purchased a Mega Drive, just because the box is all black, so it's quite easy to patch those up. If you're gonna patch something like this up, this Super Nintendo box here, if you're gonna do the yellow, definitely do a test. Yellow tends to come out a little darker when you use felt tips, so be careful when you do that. But purples, reds, blacks, dark blues, they come out brilliantly. If you've got areas like this, large areas that are damaged, don't try color it in. It's just gonna look awful. It's just gonna look like a child's done it. It's better off to do some kind of concealant over that. Um, and we're gonna do that with the Mega Drive box so I can show you what I'm gonna do for that. Um, or to just leave it as it is. But you can see if I do a test on this box here, how effective this can be. So we've got our scuff here. And what we do is we just the pen over the top and it starts to mask up this damaged scratch. Now you'll still be able to see that this has been masked up with something but at a distance you won't notice it at all. Don't use permanent pens because they'll leave a purple sheen. Use a water-based pen, they're brilliant on cardboard. The cardboard just sucks it up and it doesn't spread because if you use it on these small areas, obviously this is a, a shiny print on here, so it doesn't really spread out over anywhere. What you might want to do is just get again, get the baby wipe. And if you're doing a big area, just go over it softly to get any of excess that's gone onto the shiny bit of the print here so it doesn't show up. So with that, we're gonna go and attack the Mega Drive box and see if we can get it looking close to new again. So we've kind of done a little bit of one half here and hopefully you can start to see that a lot of the damage that we've got on this side here is a lot less visible down here. For example, you look at this side down here and you look at that side down there, you can see it's starting to make a bit of a difference. I'm going to find somewhere comfortable to sit for the next hour or so and uh, finish off this box and then we'll come back and have a look at what it looks like. So here we go, it's taken a while to get it there. It's not perfect, but uh, considering where we were, we're quite happy with the results. So one thing we still need to address is the damage that we've got over here. Now, there's no way of fixing this, um, and if we went over with inks, it's just gonna look terrible. So what I thought I would do here is get a bit of paper and try recreate those big packing slips with barcodes that you get on and uh, cover it up that way. So I've got my bit of paper. All I need to do now is design a, an original looking packing slip and stick that on there. 
here we go like magic we have a packing slip and what i've done here is i used a dot matrix printer font so i could get that kind of early 90s look to it and then i got this label and just rubbed it on the floor and that kind of gave it a grimy look so it doesn't look so pristine uh, or too pristine on this box and the next thing we're going to do is just stick this over there so for this i'm using a, a sticky back plastic or a sticky back sellotape so i've got to get this right because there is no going back once this stuff is on it will stick on there forever And this being a, a thicker paper going across all the damage will hopefully hopefully make sure that it uh, stays repaired all right there we go perfect perfect that's brilliant. I like that. And there we have it, the restoration of probably one of the worst boxes I've ever had to work on. Um, but I'm, I'm really, uh, really happy with the results. So now you know how to turn your old retro gaming boxes from this to this. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see Conquer Run for President, then leave a like on this video. And if you want regular retro gaming awesomeness, then why not subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little pixel head below. And while you're here, you can always check out two more retro gaming videos custom made just for you by clicking on either one of these two icons.